Lovely. So I'll uh, I'll make a start. Um, my name's Ben. I'm the founder of London Fields Design School. Uh, I'm also the founder of London Software Training and Taylor Hawks Design Studio. Um, I've been a lecturer at universities and colleges, and one of my passions in life is to help uh, people cultivate their creative side and also um, help develop people's careers, businesses, get people into work, and uh, yeah, help, help people find fulfillment, fun, enjoyment through um, working in, in design and the creative industries. Um, so I, uh, I set up London Software Training 12 years ago, and we are a design training and consultancy business. So we specialize in working with design studios and designers. So everything from interior, architecture, fashion, jewelry, furniture, illustration, uh, products, design, and more. Um, it, it also goes into construction and engineering and um, other industries that don't necess aren't necessarily design related, but need design consultancy, design software training. So for example, we recently we worked with Brompton Bikes and we helped uh, work on a component of a, uh, um, uh, one of their bicycles and then taught them Fusion 360 and 3D printing. And we also worked with Burberry recently and helped out with some bag designs. Um, but primarily we were there to teach the team Rhino and facilitate their ongoing creativity, proficiency and professionalism using design software. Uh, and we work with a lot of interior design studios and a lot of architectural studios um, and individuals as well. So that's um, that's London Software Training. And, and that's relevant because, um, well, for several reasons, the London Fields Design School, uh, which has been running for, for, for four years, COVID put a little bit of a, a break on, on that in some respects, because um, we started just before that a little bit of a dampener on things as i'm sure um it did for did for a lot of our lives and a lot of our, our kind of goals and, and things we we're up to but i noticed with london software training that um we were able to get people jobs through design software training coaching portfolio support and then also linking them up with companies that we work with that needed uh designers or um visualizers or art workers so the supportive role for designers and um also it was london field design school was born out of um my my uh i didn't really get on with the education system i'm a dyslexic thinker uh i i can read and write pretty well but it's not something that comes naturally to me and it's not something that i would I'm very drawn towards. Um, I'm much more of a doer, and I like to learn through having a go at stuff and learning from others and, and learning from experts and learning on the job. And I think that, well, I know that um, that's a, an excellent pathway into design, and it's something that's definitely missing um, within our society. And universities are great institutions for design as well. Um, but I, my, my personal take on my experience as a student and a university lecturer is there are more succinct, direct, pragmatic routes into the industry um, where you're not in a educational setting for three years working on more and more hypothetical projects. If you have the design software skills and a good portfolio, you can support designers, companies, design studios a year. I would roughly, if people are studying full time with us, our target is to have some sort of employment around about the year mark. Not everyone gets it at that point. Um, my 
commitment to to most students it, it does depend on on ability um is that we will continue mentoring and staying in touch until we have as a working together as a as a school and and, and with the student we will stay in touch until um, the student has some form of freelance or full-time paid employment. Um, I'm confident that the reason that we can do that is because of the 12, 13 years of, of, of London software training and the, the industry's desire and need for people that have great software skills. Um, so my introduction is is kind of going off on to explaining a little bit more about the school. So so do 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 bear with me a bit, and I'll, I'll try to to keep it relatively short. Um, so my my the, the ethos is, and 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 what I I communicate to the students is, look, I want everyone to aspire to be a brilliant furniture designer, maker, or architect, or architectural technician, interior designer. But my job and our job as a school is to get your foot in the door. I'm, I'm not, we, we still strive for very good quality work and I know what looks good and what doesn't. And I don't let students send out work that isn't going to get them work. Um, but the metric for us is getting people into work because you learn so much by being next to a designer that's been in the industry for 30 years or or you know a, a creative director or an architect or whoever it might be my personal take is that that is a much richer experience than dragging it out personally um university is is, is obviously very very important for um doctors lawyers you know all sorts of industries and design um but it, but it isn't it isn't a necessity and, and i i also created this so it was um accessible to to many different people so people that have busy lives people for myself i've never taken huge gambles i've always taken very calculated risks to, to build the companies that i've set up um and I think all of us are pragmatic. We have families and mortgages and dependents and rent and different levels of income. And to just stop something and start a 30 grand university course for three years without the guarantee of any work is, is, is a very big gamble. Um, so the flexibility, which I'll talk about later, and, and obviously the cost of, of, of the course is aimed at career changes, people with families, people on lower incomes, um, people on higher incomes, but, but um, you know, need that, that, that uh, flexibility. Um, so I'll talk a little bit more about that. And then the other um, company I've, I've set up, I've set up five businesses, a couple, um, uh, I actually set up a, a florist slash coffee shop slash gallery at some point, but that didn't really work out. And I also set up a bespoke online furniture company and that didn't work out and as you as you probably know there are also there are many failures before you get success but i also set up a design studio taylor hawks design which um which was focusing on furniture exhibition spaces architectural design so working with burberry helping to develop their um new store designs in Abu Dhabi, also doing some branding and logo development with Burberry, helping to um, visualize their new logo, um, which came out several years ago. I was 3D printing that and showing how it would look in different, different settings, things like fashion and jewelry. You know, I, I am someone that will I like variation when it comes to to design, and and uh, I'm a firm believer in you, you. If you if you have if you are an aesthete and you, you you have an understanding of what looks good and what works, why can't you design a piece of jewelry if you have three D printing and Rhino and Photoshop skills and get it made, and at the same time work on an interior design project. Um, and I, I and I'm a big advocate, and 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 I encourage my students 
to have a few different strings to their bow, a few different disciplines if they so wish, and then pursue those as the years go on. Now, this is interesting because, you know, I think it's nice to have that variation, but also from a pragmatic point of view, um, you, you, you have different revenue streams. So you have different opportunities to, to make money as a creative. And I'll talk a little bit, a little bit more about that as well. Um, yeah, so Taylor Hawks Design is, is is the other company, and 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 these these kind of have, have informed one another. Um, and I actually realised through designing and making furniture and um, working on all these different projects that I I really missed uh, having been a college and university lecturer. I really missed uh, working with people and. And, and cultivating talent and portfolios and um, helping people with with their careers. So, so that was a, a, a reason why I, another reason why I set up London Field Design School. It's also a great school. Um, like I said, I, I think, uh, um, but we a small. It's it, it really does work for neurodivergent students. It's a it's a relatively small. Um, proportion of our of our cohort that are uh, for example autistic but we do have perhaps you know five percent of our students are autistic for example and it works really well for them because they can work remotely from their home and you know you, those of you that might know um, people that are on the spectrum highly sensitive not always able to communicate as effectively as they would like to um, or read certain cues. Um, so I'm very proud of the fact that um, it's it's accessible to all, uh, and and we 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 try and support um, support everyone. Um, yeah, so that's that's a bit about me, um, and a little bit about the the companies that that I founded. And Taylor Hawks Design is paused for the, for the time being. I'm focusing on London Fields Design School and London Software Training. And oh, the, the beauty, another thing, the beauty of the, the, the London Software Training and London Fields Design School is that when students are studying from London Fields, half the class are London Software Training. So you have the design director at Burberry, you have uh, an engineer from Brompton Bikes, you have a graphic designer, and the networking opportunity is fantastic online or in class, um, and you get to see uh projects live projects because we 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 open up the last day of every unit software unit to bring in your own projects and and the people that are working in design bring in their work so you can sneak peeks at professional work and also i think it imbues well i know it imbues confidence within our london field students because the quality of the training they're getting is what top london studios companies are coming to us and have done for for many years and they're getting the same same training and i think it really helps people see the reality of well i learn the software i sketch and draw i photograph i film listen to podcasts read go to exhibitions but i learn the software do projects build a portfolio with Ben and the team support, I secure internships and work experience, and then that builds into to employment. Um, and we, we build up a community. Um, we have an alumni. I like to stay in touch touch with everyone. And as an entrepreneur, I like to I love to see other people having a go at stuff, whether that's just freelancer or solo or five years down the line, students want to set up a their own little company and um, I'm always really happy to to get back in touch with with people and and and, and help them. So, you know, I'm buzzing. I, I I love my work and I love the school. Um, yeah, and that, that's a bit about me. So, um, it'd be lovely if if you guys could uh, introduce yourselves and 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 yeah, just let us know why you're on the call. Uh, and then if you want to embellish a little bit more, please do. I have to say, just so you know, for myself, this is a really interesting, this is probably one of the most interesting parts. <laughs> Obviously, you know, me talking is for myself is, is not necessarily going to be that engaging, but hearing about your story, and it's really interesting for, for other people to hear where you're coming from as well. Barbara, would you, if, if you don't want to, um, if you don't want to introduce yourself, just stay muted 
but if you fancy it, it would be lovely if, if you did. Um, Barbara, would you like to introduce yourself? Staying muted, I think you're staying muted. Um, please, um, yeah, unmute if you, you want to uh, contribute. Elise, oh, Elise. Hi, good evening. Yeah, we can hear you, good evening. Good, um, yeah, so I um, studied um, fashion and branding um, 20 years ago. <laughs> um but ended up in the property business um me and my husband started a company about nine years ago um so i'm doing interior design on those projects um but i would like to extend my business a bit to do things for others as well um so i i just like to freshen up um things like to get a bit more knowledge on the new design software um and a bit more work experience really i mean it's, it's mainly because I've, I've been doing my own thing um, and I basically do whatever I want. <laughs> um, but it's nice to, um, yeah, just get a bit more knowledge on on how to work with different clients um, and, and de definitely the design software because I've been doing um, vector works only and in design and Photoshop. Um, but it's been it's it's been a while um, and especially for all the technical drawings, um, I definitely need more um, more skills. Nice. So, would you? Um, thank you. W would you? Are you looking to sort of add the next professional layer to the interior design work you're you're, you're doing at the moment? Yeah, I, th I think so. Um, more to to visualize everything. Um, because for me, when when I work for myself, I, I basically make my own plan, but um, don't work it out as well as that you would do for others because they want to see things first before they they want to accept your um your plans um so that that's one of the things um and also like more um the architecture side of it so like if i could draw um small extensions and those kind of things that that would would be a very good skill for me to have yeah nice nice okay and do you are you um I'm prying here. I'm just interested, but do you have experience um, it, with with extensions, or are you looking to gain that knowledge? Uh, I'm looking to gain it really. Um, it's yeah. more. Uh, I mean, architecture. If it would be a very big project, it would not be my preferred choice. Um, but I think doing small extensions, or um, yeah, th those kind of. Um, constructions or like taking um or putting um steel beams in that kind of thing you know like smaller smaller things um yeah that that could just work for me i think to you know, get a bit nice. more knowledge on there to be able to draw it properly um and there are other things like um light plans and all of that would be would be a bonus to get yeah nice well, okay excellent yes yeah, so, so certainly with you you learn to to draw to to a a professional standard and then in, in addition to that because of the skill set you have if you want to to learn in a, in a really professional context um how to pull together extensions and lighting plans what mm -hmm. you and i would do is is we would line up um some some work experience with with some practices that do that small architectural firms small lighting design firms and because you have the visualization techniques you would be uh you you would be a great asset to that company for you know if you offered a day a week or two days a week for a series of four weeks or eight weeks so you limit your time but the information you absorb is you know it's absolutely current it's 2024 knowledge you know you're working with top companies but they're small, so they don't necessarily have the three D skills. Um, they might have; they probably have two D technical skills. But there's an exchange of knowledge, so yeah. it's gold dust because you're able to learn how these extensions go together and how lighting plans go together, and you actually draw them up and do them in three D. Yeah. So it's a great it's it's great for them, but it's great for you. And then you, as an entrepreneur and someone that works with your partner, you can then implement that. And as you know, and for the others as well, 
you know, you don't have to be a signed off architect to be designing buildings or extensions or lots or basements. Now, of course, it helps if you've gone through that, but if you, you can still create these drawings by learning from people that know how to do them and having experience, and then you can have them signed off by an engineer and architect. So you can be an architectural designer um, without having that architectural degree. Yeah. Um, and we work with plenty of people that have come from a construction background that were actually on the tools on site. And then we coached them and supported them. And then they transitioned. These tended to be guys in their 40s and 50s that had done their time. <laughs> project managing on site and wanted to basically have a bit of a quieter life behind the computer, spend more time with their family and make a bit of money. And then they, they learned the software skills. Now, obviously they had an understanding of construction, but this is all stuff that can be learned through working with people and internships and work experience. Um, you know, you'll probably get gauged from this call. Most of our students aren't 18 or 20 year olds. Some are, but the vast majority are, 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 are a lot older than that. And with that comes experience. And uh, you're never, no one's up too old to, to do work experience or internships. And my personal take on them uh, and what, what I see is, you know, you, you do the equivalent of 20 days at a practice. I would swap that for a year at university. Now that that might that might seem maybe not a year, but a decent chunk of time. Um, you, you you're getting hands-on, up-to-date knowledge. You understand how it works. It's technical, um, and then for me, I can then see how it actually happens, rather than just doing research. I mean, you're going to do research, but you know, doing research and doing drawings, and then here's my project. Um, yeah, so. Um, yeah. Uh, okay, Barbara. Thanks for your message. Um, yeah. Anyway, Elise, thank you so much for for sharing that. It's, um, no worries. Yeah. yeah, really inspiring. Thank you. Uh, Yant. Evening. Um, Evening. Yes, I'm probably looking for sort of the um, career change at this point in my life. I've. Um, most recently be working as a IT project manager and worked in sort of IT related fields for the last 16 years um, and with different levels of creative input in some of the um, work of doing some I'm now looking to sort of hopefully move away from some of the more corporate environment and um, move into something a bit more creative and um, this um, the London Fields program really um, looks quite interesting because I'm not, um, I didn't fancy signing up for three or four years to a university course or something. And um, so, yeah, it's really appealing and um, it's been interesting to hear what you've um, uh, been explaining tonight. Um, my background, I originally uh, studied horticulture and landscape design. Um, so I have done a little background in that, but then I went on and spent 10 years as a chef uh, around the world. And then um, before going into IT for a number of years. And um, so it's not the first career change I've had, but um, it's um, I'm excited to um, get moving on something different again. Yeah, nice. Life's too short, isn't it? You've got to, you've got to, you've got to switch it up. Yeah. Like, it, that's what I've I mean that's that's been that's been my adage that's why I've done lots of different things and you've got to have a punt you've got to have a punt you know and would, would it be landscape and, and landscape design you're most interested in or I'm um, actually um I've been doing a lot of I've been doing furniture chores chores the last five years I'm also interested in furniture design and building my own stuff and um I do like the idea of the architectural design as well. I've I've looked into doing the the full on architecture um, training, but uh, for the seven years, I just can't take that time out. Um, so the architecture design, I think that was one of the things I found appealing about the um, it was the sort of the multiple outcomes and the different areas I could look at. 
So um, I think I'd, ideally in a perfect world, I'd sort of like to have a bit of a portfolio and do a bit of each. But um, I think it's, yeah, it would develop over time, I think, to see what's where the opportunities are. Thank you. Thank you, Jan. Yeah, fantastic. I mean, what, what, what we would, you know, if, 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 we, if we were to work together, we would we'd actually look at building two portfolios, a furniture one and an architectural one. Um, and uh, we're, we're kind of pretty, pretty, London is, 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 is you know, there's a lot of, uh, are, you, are you based in London, Jan? I can hear your Antipodean. But, uh, uh, just outside of London in Buckinghamshire in Chesham. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, lovely, yeah, 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 nice, okay. So, um, yeah, um, with with again, I mentioned before, it's I think it's I think it's interesting and also smart to have a couple of strings to to your bow with architectural design. Once you've got BIM building information modeling through Revit and and Rhino, but more Revit and Vectorworks, also Rhino down, and you, you you're pretty proficient at that. You've got some good examples of work, and you also you need AutoCAD and a couple of other bits. Uh, you you. It, you can't i wouldn't say you walk into a position but we can get you into architectural visualization to start with and technical drawing so i would you know even now this is sort of like tips for you guys generally definitely invest in some books so you know architectural pocket book um you know how to design a house and all of these different things that it's very inspiring to have these next to your bed and just pick them up, um, absorb the information, explore YouTube, podcasts, uh, magazines, and do the same with furniture. And just, uh, you know, the, the information, what we choose to absorb in life really is quite impactful on how we feel and um, uh, where we're able to, to move towards. So, you know, maybe, um, for myself, I decided to watch less news and not use Instagram and then focus on other different things and, 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 you know, believe it, you know, that, that, that works, you know, so it's the same with architecture and furniture design. Those of you, regardless of whether um, we end up working together, um, you know, you, you can go away and start getting that information now anyway, because you, if you have a feeling that you might be drawn towards it, it's great to research all of the furniture design companies in London and the surrounding area that you like the look of. And you think, oh, I love that style. I love that style. I'd love to design that in CAD and CNC route it or kind of there's more of a natural hand carved element. So you create this database in a Google sheet. You get the founder name, you get the Google map location, you get the website, you get the Instagram, you get the gatekeepers, you know, you get the kind of different people that you might want to reach out to on LinkedIn, email, Instagram. And then we work towards making a portfolio that fits in with those companies. So when you send the portfolio, they're like, okay, Jan seems to kind of get our aesthetic and understand our ethos with materials. Well, this is strange. And like, we're kind of giggling in the background because this was this was all kind of planned. You know, this was a this was a pragmatic approach to employment, and we make employment or business development, you know, or, 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 or entrepreneurship. That's at the beginning. We're talking and thinking about that right at the start. Um, and uh, yeah, back to architectural design. You, you, small studios, one to five. I know we know that they don't have Revit, they don't have vector work, they don't have 3D printing. If they see a compelling portfolio, someone reaches out to them. I love your uh, business. I love your studio. I particularly like the townhouse in Belgravia. Um, I, 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 I would love to work for your company. You might not have an opportunity, um, but um, take a look at my portfolio. You, you know, if you have time for for a quick video chat or a coffee, or you think there might be a, a bit of work experience where I can contribute to growing your company, they pe people people need it. It's not as if they're doing it out of the goodness of their heart. They haven't got three D visualization. 
So you don't need to, anyone in the architectural design, you don't need to finish the course understanding insulation and regulation and, uh, you know, different types of brickwork. You need to be able to visualize something for an architect. Then you position yourself ne physically next to the architect in a lovely, you know, yeah, I think it's really nice what you mentioned about getting into a creative environment. And that's the picture that I, I paint for the students, which is, look, have, you're going to be in a lovely studio with people that are a bit more creatively minded, a little bit more airy-fairy and soft around the edges. And you get to sit next to an architect who's been doing it for 40 years, and you've got the wizardry of 3D visualization. So you're helping them out. And then just through osmosis, you are learning about architecture but you're also earning money at the same time. It's a day rate, a decent day rate. Um, so you're learning whilst earning. And it's great for confidence. It's great for professional development. And um, yeah, that's that's the key. So um, thank you so much, Jan. It's great. Thanks for sharing and, and allowing me to, to pivot off of your point and uh, talk at great length. <laughs> Um, yeah, Barbara, did you, did you want to chime in? It's we can hear, go, uh, yes, now I, I hold, we... I hold my hand on the mouse, it works. Um, hi, thanks for doing hi. this. Um, I, um, have been sort of dreaming of the phrase, making it in design i think i read this a few years ago <laughs> so, <laughs> so, uh, that's a nice phrase how do i get there um i didn't uh study design i studied um business studies a long time ago uh worked in offices in london and kind of thought yeah i like doing this but i have a creative side how do i do both so i would make certain things and sell them at markets and i would work in an office at the same time too and then um right now i am um i just have an online textile uh, sort of haberdashery store i suppose you could call it but um when I tried to design my own textiles with dyes, for example, I sort of hit a milestone where I would have had to use Photoshop to create, say, repeat patterns, or I would have to use InDesign to create something that would get into a magazine. Um, and then I sort of taught myself the very basics of it, or how do I get my design to sort of uh, let's say be a wallpaper and be a technical repeat and when I got to those kind of milestones I kind of thought I don't know if I want to go down that route and that was a couple of years ago and then I sort of focused on the um, the online store since then but I always had an interest in I have the design anthology magazine in front of me so these are the things that i sort of consume a lot of mm -hmm. i would go to you know london spaces and just dream about how can you make this space a lot more human or what is it that makes a space appeal to us on a sort of sensory level where we like being in it um how do i get my creative ideas that my head is full of into something tangible that actually materializes as a as a job or as a space or as an addition to you know something that I actually do in this industry um because i've never worked in it but i sort of looked at it a lot i guess over the years it sort of dawned on me that when I saw your course and I didn't want to do a full degree again. Um, when I saw your course, I thought, well, this looks like something that could perhaps work for me and sort of fill in the gaps. <laughs> but I'm not quite sure where I want to go. Is it just a textile design 
and get the I don't know maybe learn how to design my own magazine in in design or something like that or I've always been interested in interior design um, but not necessarily the the textile part of it it's more of the space so I would read about I don't know wabi sabi interiors or Japanese style interiors and how do they make that sort of minimalistic look into a much more humanistic design than what the spaces that we are living in especially in London where they are crowned and small and a lot of the times uh, so that's kind of where my interest is um, well, where it takes me at the moment, I'm not sure. And I'm not actually in London at the moment, I'm in the US. Um, and I have a 17 year old son. Uh, so I have to kind of um, work around all that family life, different countries. But I did live in London for 21 years, mm -hmm. um, up until 10 years ago. And I grew up in Hungary, so three countries. Plenty of design inspiration and loads of different people from all over the world that always adds to um, a very interesting mix that I enjoy. So that's it. In. Thank you. So uh, that was lovely. Your textile business is that? Are you selling? Did you? I, I might have misheard you, but do you? Are you designing patterns? And you're, you're selling it online? I have or? They are on hold at the moment. What I am actually selling is I use dyes. So I use the dyes to create some textiles and I also use them to create some threads that people can embroider with. And uh, here in the US right now, the embroidery threads and sort of self-care stitching and all that kind of making is quite big. So I am selling that at the moment. I do have quite a few designs though. I, uh, took to uh, top drawer in London last year, which is a trade fair for interiors. Um, that didn't take off, but I do have the designs, <laughs> and they are created with um, dyes and a Japanese craft um, method where you tie fabric and dip it in dyes, and then you you create you create a small sample, and then I I took the small samples, scan it into the computer, and sort of try to make it more modern um, by um, sort of making it a little bit more graphic. Am I going into too much detail that nobody no, 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 no. <laughs> I, 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 it's really interesting. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really inspired by design from all around the world. Um, and it's, it's lovely to hear that you're, you're, you're um, in, inspired by Japanese techniques. And, and you mentioned Wabi Sabi, which for, for anyone who hasn't heard, that's the um, it's a it's a word that we don't have a direct translation for in English, but it's the, the your background right now. Uh, <laughs> it's your background right now, like the mirror behind you and the white wall. That's the perfect yeah, spot for the inspiration. Yeah, it's 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 the beauty. Is it also the beauty and imperfection, right? Yeah, as well. Yeah. So it's it's, it's like not having anything to. It doesn't have to be precise or symmetrical or sometimes it's the beauty in something dying or the beauty in something being asymmetrical or looking at nature and seeing that something isn't per perfect um so that's fantastic and uh, it's really interesting to hear um where you're where you're where you're coming from barbara and you know with adobe you can do also um i mean i, I think the uh the techniques you're using sound beautiful as well as that you might want to do digital prints particularly uh, potentially with with illustrator and photoshop and and if you're designing interiors you know and, and 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 doing visualizations and then maybe doing some some work with with interior design practices out in the states uh, again if you've got visualization techniques 3d and and 2d technical drawings and design presentations many small interior design firms um which tend to be female-led and they tend to be women um in 40s 50s 60s 70s they frequently don't have they're not implementing design software so if you have that 
you, you, you're an asset straight away and, and then you can help that individual or that small company grow their business through the skills that you learn with us and the support that you have. And at the same time, you can learn about the interior design um, business and, and, and uh, you know, they don't need to know that you're kind of slowly observing how they operate and then you can set your own thing up in three years time <laughs> uh, if you wanted to. But obviously, that's not 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 everyone wants to do that. But you know, you, you, a solo solo anyway, a freelancer, or you're just picking up your own projects. Um, wonderful. Thank you so much, Barbara. Thank you. Cheers. Uh, Valley, would you like to please tell me if I've um, mispronounced your name? Would you like to uh, introduce yourself? Hi. Can you hear Hi. me? We can hear you. Yeah. Uh, my name is Ali, and uh, I'm currently living in the United States. Uh, and I'm an architect. I did my Bachelor's of Architecture in India in 2016. I was graduated in 2016. Uh, and I was doing internships for one year till 2017. And I took a long break. Till now, it's a break. Um, yeah, so I just forgot all my softwares and yeah, now I want to get back. I want to re-engage myself with my field and explore some opportunities related to my studies. Fantastic. Okay. And within architecture? Yeah, architecture and interior design. I'm impressed with both. Okay. Brilliant. Well, I, I, um, I think I, I covered that with with Jan and Barbara, um, so I won't bore everyone by by repeating myself. Um, but you again, uh, my my, if you're interested in both, I would uh, encourage you to pursue both. And um, it also means that you can try out architecture, you can try out interior design, and you can see which because because you do get different profiles of founders and different different people that you'd be working with, different environments, different projects, different work experiences when you're actually earning. So it's nice to um, to have both. And uh, you might want to get a full time salary job, uh, but also with freelance, you know, you can you can you can have uh, dip your toe in in both industries. Thank you, Valley. Thank you. Thank you. And I was going to say, like questions, um, do do save them up, and, and at the end there'll be some some space, and I'll, I'll do a little FAQ kind of pitch as well. Kun Kunla, I, I'm I'm reading your e the beginning of your email. Is it Kunla? Kunla passion. I'll presume you're you're staying muted. Uh, Yusuf, would you like to? And again, please correct me if I've mispronounced your name. Would you like to introduce yourself? Okay. Uh, yeah. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Is it is it Kunla? Uh, is it right? Yeah, Kunle. Yeah, correct. Thank you. Kunle is correct. Yeah. Uh, I. I used to work in the furniture industry. I I sell furniture. I run a, um, a retail out, outlet in my country, Nigeria. But I moved to the UK now, and um, I'm trying to see uh, opportunities uh, in the interior design and ar architectural design um, industry. I'm just trying to see where I can fit in. And that uh, I think I'm more fascinated with um, interior design and um, architectural designs. Yeah, but I'm trying to see what opportunities are bound in, in that industry here in the UK. Brilliant. Mm. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kunla. And, and again, mm. I think um, the same that I said to, to Valley, uh, I touched on those with, with Barbara and Yant. Um, but what, what's what's lovely uh, is that you can you can dip your toe in, in both industries and 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 see what it's like. And I think just to build on the point that I that I was making earlier, um, different companies have different 
ways of working and different ethoses and and it's through many bits of work experience you can feel what the atmosphere is like and you can get a sense of uh the, the way that they work and you know one architectural studio could be quite stressy and oh you got to kind of work super hard that tends to be the bigger studios so the kind of richard rogers the norman fosters the big name studios i would personally would stay away from um because everyone wants to work there you're just a number and you often end up it's quite depersonalized and you often end up working on very sort of slightly menial trivial elements of a building but if you can get in a small architectural studio which which I can or interior which I would be able to support you in as a as a visualizer and technical uh drawer to start with um you it's it's you you're much more part of a professional family you know if there's 5 10 15 20 employees um you you're not just a number and you're contributing to the growth of that business through your um design software expertise and there are many as as i mentioned before many many small firms that don't have those skills and once you've got them and you're presenting them professionally um with a portfolio it's uh it's it's a it's a very attractive offer to these practices yeah uh i'm also looking at opportunities where i can go uh probably freelance yeah work freelance you know for this company yeah yeah mm. certainly and 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 just for um so though you know i'm, I'm sure you you're probably all familiar with freelance but then yeah the um the notion of of essentially working for yourself and charging a day rate to to companies yeah. that's my pref i mean as an entrepreneur that's my preference because um i i, I if i was starting again and doing this course i know the better i am the faster i am you know without rushing but the more skill set i have the more understanding i have of vr and building information modeling and visualization then you can charge more per day so then the better you get the more in demand you are you can get your details passed around so you work for one studio they might only have one or two days worth of work but you do a great job for them and then they pass your details on to a friend of theirs that's an architect or mm -hmm. a designer you work with them you learn more and then as you progress you can charge more and it gives you there isn't that security of a salary necessarily mm -hmm. with that little bit more element of risk you 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 know longer term you have a bit more autonomy you're kind of working for yourself even though you're working for other people and you know you can take breaks you can say oh i'm not available for 5 weeks in the summer or you could you could work remotely from somewhere else still doing the work so obviously the better you are and the the the, the more competent you are the the greater the ability you have to command a higher day rate but you can also have that flexibility as well um it just if you want to you know not go i don't don't not asking for anyone's uh uh, situation with home ownership but one thing is if you want to buy a property if you haven't already you need to show two years worth I mean I'm getting into the details here but you know that's when a salary is useful because you can get a property but if you have freelance you need to show two years of, of um, books but um, I mean I'm getting into the kind of I'm, I suppose I'm getting into the minutiae detail but freelance is a great way of um, I, I, what I like about it is that it enables you to keep aspiring to get better and better and better, and then you can earn more and more money, and um, and then you can decide who you're working with down the line as well, and then you absorb all that information, Kunla, and then maybe down the line, five years down the line, ten years, whatever it might be you might then start doing your own projects where you might do extensions or 
loft extensions or basements or simple, not simple, but you know, architectural um, improvements to homes. And you might team up with a contractor or someone that works in construction and you have a little business together, you know, so that, uh, you know, I'm biased, as I said, as an entrepreneur, but but I, I like uh, I like the freedom that, that freelance. Mm. So thank you for, for sharing that. And um, yeah, really great to, to hear your story. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you. Uh, you Yusuf, would you like to um, introduce yourself? Yes. Uh, good evening. Good evening. So uh, uh, I used to be a freelance designer uh, back home in Nigeria. Uh, so when I came to the UK, I, I found out that uh, basically what I used was Photoshop for my designs. So I noticed in the UK, you need to learn more than one uh, software uh, in terms of getting a job. And uh, yeah, as uh, as in terms of being employed as a graphic designer or in terms of you or uh, having to do a freelance job, you need more. You need to expand in terms of your uh, software learnings, like in designs and the likes. So basically, and uh, the reason why I I want I want to do a course is another re another reason is to have a certificate like uh, the London Field Certificate and also, uh, I think that is just it basically, uh, and to understand markets the graphic design markets here in the UK. Uh, so that is just it basically. Yeah. Thank you, Yusuf. Am I right in saying that it's graphic design is yeah, your yeah. primary interest? Yes, yes, yeah, all right. Brilliant. So uh, just to give you guys a bit of a, and Yusuf particularly, but with graphic design, what we do is we um, help you build projects and put a portfolio. And then we have a lot of live, quite a lot of live projects um, in graphic design where you get to, um, uh pitch your ideas to a, to a to a company and often they're paying or they have a prize and I, I also we we ask our students to enter competitions that are external of our school because you then are putting your work up against the competition you know london competition and you can see what other people are doing and you can be inspired by not just your fellow students at london fields but people that are um, uh, graphic designers or budding graphic designers and, and taking part in competitions. And the way to build a graphic design career, it, it, this, is, this is how I cultivate um, uh, students' professional careers, is you do graphic design for companies that don't really have professional branding, logo website instagram yet so even as a relatively i mean you, you not sure what your experience is but depending on your experience level you can contribute to that company straight away so students will go to broadway market borough market Morby street market different high streets and if you have a little business card walk in and say, hi, you know, I'm Yusuf, uh, I'm a graphic designer, I'm, I'm looking to build my portfolio. I'd love to help you with some menu design, some signage, uh, a new website, and maybe some Instagram content. I I'd be really happy to do um, a little bit of that for, for free so you can, you can see what I'm about and it lets me build my portfolio. What happens is that you get live experience, you're working with a client, you can make mistakes because you're not charging any money, um, but you can also help them grow their business through what you're doing. And then at the end of it, you have actual project work that can go in a portfolio. And then when other clients and employers see what you can do, they don't know that you did that for free. You know, that could be 
obviously we're not we, we know we, we're completely upfront and honest in our cv and portfolio but what's the difference between you charging and not charging the end result is you worked for a real company and you helped develop their their logo and, and their branding and their instagram so and that, that's just green flag so it's, it's a really um and students get really excited by that because rather than just doing random projects they're actually working with people that give them real world feedback you sir thank you so much for that much appreciated Thanks. thank you um yeah so I'll, I'll go through a few little little kind of uh, FAQ bits, and then you guys, uh, please ask any questions that you have. No silly questions, um, really. Uh, it's and often, if you're thinking it, someone else is thinking it as well. So, software, um, you get most of it for free as a student at London Fields, uh, or heavily discounted. Adobe is one that you 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 do have to. No, we don't sell the software; it's all with the software providers. But Adobe is something you will have to pay for. It's a monthly subscription. You can turn it on or off. Um, but you know, if you manage that, um, it's, it's 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 not. You're talking about low hundreds, two hundred or so over a like year or so period it's difficult to kind of exactly quantify depending on how much you're going to use adobe um so you, you've got to put a bit of money aside for software but most of it is free so uh, autocad revit are both free and they'd usually be two grand if you weren't a student vectorworks is free that would be two grand uh, rhino's a hundred or so instead of a grand um, a thousand pounds, should I say? I'm, I'm kind of using a, a London colloquial term there. Um, yeah, so so SketchUp's fifty pounds instead of two fifty. Uh, so that's great, great, great thing as well. Um, and then the the course is really flexible. So you you basically we would be meeting regularly um, for video mentoring sessions. So every four, five, or six weeks, depending on the frequency that you would like and then we also have group tutorials every four weeks where we have a cohort of individuals and we're sharing work we're talking about ideas collaborating to an extent in terms of oh there's this exhibition here or this website there and that's a really fun part of the course for those of you that are in london we have student and staff socials every two months so we go to a local um sort of restaurant bar and and uh yeah spend some time together and and, and get to know each other in a, in, a, in a social setting um which is always really lovely um and then of course the design software training is um that's you you with the help of myself and my colleagues um you um I'm just sorry. I'm just pulling up uh, pulling up the website as I as I kind of uh, pause. But you you look at the course calendar on the desktop website, and you decide what works for you. So it's flexible. So you only need to really design the course two months at a time. So if you scroll all the way down, pardon me, um, you can see. Um, you know, this is quite small, but it, when you see three lines across, that's a three-day course. When you see two lines across, that's a two-day a two-day course. When you see a single line, and it also says it on here, it's an evening course. And I, I teach you and my colleagues teach you about how that works. And then you email us, or we decide, why don't you do AutoCAD in March? And then really you need to take a few weeks to focus on that and just remember that the training in the classroom or online is five to ten percent of what you need to put in you've got to re-watch the videos you've got to uh, um, extend your knowledge uh, through practicing i'll give you projects that you can copy to start with um, or um, be able to kind of amalgamate different projects to create your own and then you build up confidence so it's really flexible uh, you can do it in the evening daytime in class online you can take breaks 
Um, it needs to, two years is, is the kind of limit. Um, if you're working full time, if you're working five days a week, 40 hours uh, a week, then you, you've got to be, it's got to be 18 months to two years, you know, because you're only really going to do one course per evening and then you've got to find some other time to practice. If you're doing the course full time, it's feasible to, to, to secure employment within a year if you're working really hard and you're smart and you're kind of um, doing as you're told <laughs> to an extent, but you know, you're, you're kind of following the guidance that I give you and my colleagues give you, um, then that would be a benchmark. But at the same time, you don't need to rush it. We say six months is the minimum time, but you would only do that if you had to blitz through it but really draw it out a little bit because you get more support from myself. Um, and then often our students get work before the course is finished, which is obviously great. So that, and, and work is, is the goal, right? And the same with internships. So if you need to pause the course, if something happens, you know, touch wood, you know, life is challenging, right? So, you know, something might happen with family or, social situation whatever you can pause it you know this is this is flexible and it's supportive and and uh life throws up many obstacles for us and this course I, I, my my big my intention is that the students enjoy it and they enjoy seeing their progress and they enjoy being encouraged and and, and being motivated and and hopefully uh, feeling more and more confident in themselves and their abilities as the months progress, and it's not a it's not a graded course. You know, I have high expectations, and uh, I, I will I will make sure that your work is 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 of, of, of very good quality or, or the best of your abilities uh, within the time frame. But um, you know, I, I don't want. Uh, you don't need to be anxious basically not that you anyone seems like particularly anxious individuals but i certainly know for myself at university and college and school that was a very anxiety inducing uh, or it could be at times because i was a procrastinator procrastinator because i i'm a dyslexic thinker and i, I uh, writing and and grades and and uh, and handing things in on time was was uh, not something i really wanted to do um so anyway, slight sort of tangent there, but um, we, we we deliver high quality training and 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 uh, high quality results, but we want you to have fun and and enjoy it and and find the things that you really like doing and lean into that. Um, so that's that's part of the key. Oh, well, that's one of the with one of the keys as well. Um, other quick quick things that we often talk about computers. I like to see if students can use their existing computers. Um, you can get some specifications from us on what, what we recommend, um, but it's nice to not have to spend more money. That being said, if you get a decent computer, Mac or Windows, um, it's an investment in yourself, it's an investment in you as a business, it's an investment in your career. The faster the computer, the, the more money you can earn down the line, um, the better it looks, Image is, image is important always, like whether we like it or not, you want a good looking computer. And when you turn up, that's your, that's your sword. That's your kind of, you know, you go and do some freelance work and you bring your laptop and you want it to look smart and you want it to look like a design piece of, of, uh, of engineering. Um, Mac versus PC. Uh, I have a, yeah, MacBook Pro, Barbara has just asked, would you recommend a MacBook Pro? Yes, MacBook Pro um, and the best one that you can afford is going to run everything uh, really well. I will say one thing that there's a limit, there's a slight limitation on, um, you can't put Revit on Mac, but what you do is you put, windows you install windows onto your mac and then you run revit through windows it's pretty straightforward it costs 70 pounds and then that works there's also a function on some of the rendering that um 
that 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 works better on Windows. So um, if you're you're an Apple head, then go for the MacBook Pro, and there are simple workarounds. Um, if you're impartial, I would say a slight leaning towards Windows because you get more for your money and the compatibility. Um, so it is swings and roundabouts. Um, so yeah, but MacBook Pro, MacBook Pro is good. Um, yeah, uh, I think that's it, Mayan. So if you want to ask a question, there's at the bottom of your screen or phone, there's a there's a hand. Um, if you click on that, uh, and then yeah, if you have any questions, I'm I'm really happy to to answer any. Uh, Elise. Um, yeah, for me, the question is on the, the classes. Um, I just saw your, your calendar for a bit um, because I'm, I'm not um, very close to where you are. Um, is, is there an option to basically book classes for one or two days or is it like usually one or two classes that are, um, are per day? Would it be possible to book like a full day sort of kind of thing? Yeah, so the course, the, the classes are fixed. So you either do with AutoCAD, the, the first part is either three days long, consecutive, always, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or you um, do an evening course, which is one evening per week over five weeks. And then all the Adobe's and 3D printing are two days and they're consecutive days. Um, and then they tend to run every five to 12 weeks, depending on the software. A lot of them run every five to, to seven weeks. So they're running regularly. Um, yeah, does that, does that but, answer but your it question? But always be like one or two um, different classes Per day, so you can't have like like um, um, what is it? You you can't have um, vector works and InDesign and Photoshop like planned on one day for for example. No, no, no. So you would do vector works for three days. Yeah. And then you you, you could do the second part the following week if you wanted to for another three days. Um. And then you wouldn't want to do, you don't want to mix loads of softwares. You want to focus on one at a time. So okay. you do say four days of Photoshop over a two week period. And then I would be suggesting to you that you spend from home at least two to three weeks focusing just on Photoshop before you start another software. Okay. And you could do it on online as well, if that helps. Yeah, that's why I'm thinking like because I, I prefer to go in um, like yeah. one or two days every so often because um, at some point you just want to get out of the house as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, but if it's, <laughs> one, like, if it's a few hours a day, um, you know, it might not be worthwhile to go in or not. So that's where my decision needs to be made. Yeah. So what you could do, Elise, is there is an option where well, it's not really an option. It's always going to be six hours for the day course, like 9.45 till 4 p.m. So it's not, it's it's fixed. It's, it's the day courses are that period of time. Yeah. And then they tend to be, cons where, where do you live, Elite? Um, I'm um, Farnham. Okay. Yorkshire What's that way. into London, like an hour and a half or something? Or? Uh, I mean, it's an, an hour to Waterloo, yeah. And then I still yeah. get to Okay, yeah. So it's, yeah, I get, I get you. So you can do Waterloo and City Line to Bank, and then Bank to us. It's, it's, yeah, so yeah, it's, it's, it's quite it. a trip. But um, if it's for a full day, it's it's still worth it, I think. Um, you could do a bit of both. You could do a bit a bit of both, a bit of online and a bit of in class. Or you could do. Yeah, I think that would that would work well. Yeah, yeah. It is nice if you can come in. It's nice, but online is is really effective as well you know but i i i understand in person is 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 can be preferable yeah yeah i mean i i, th I think both both can work but if there's um there's the six hour day courses then if i can combine it with some evening ones i think it would be good yeah um and then Lovely. also on on those classes um 
do you pass or fail them like is there like a certain yeah so you you gain a you gain a certificate of completion at the end of each um course there's not a test so with that certificate you you can then you can say you can put that on linkedin and on your cv individually um but the so so that's useful for employers to see but really what 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 i'm doing and you we're doing together is we're making sure that you you really know it and that that does take a much that takes much longer so say you do six days of vector works realistically you're going to have to put in another at least um 30 days to kind of be competent and another you know 30 days at some point in the future to start getting better and better and then the learning curve is quite sharp and then it peters off once you've done say an additional 60 days on top of your six days um it peters out so yeah. that that is important to, to to realize and for you to understand that if you do when you do the training there's a lot more to be done uh, at home or in the studio if you want to come in yeah practice yeah um then one more question now then so um i got to speak up <laughs> no, um, no, these are great questions for everyone as well really good um um for the the work experience um have you got all um companies in in london or also outside of london all over all yes. over and although we we do partner up people we get companies that want work in, they actually of, often people are saying do you know they need employees they need sometimes they need full-time and freelancers but what i would do what we would do elise is from farnham you would research within a radius of yourself that you're willing to drive to or get trained to and then you're creating a database of those companies and you're reaching out to them and i'll i'll, I'll kind of tell you what to say and, and and make sure your portfolio looks good so we would secure something for you this this local okay yeah we had a student um we have a student who's in the lake district in the middle of nowhere and she's had quite a few different she had a full-time job and several freelance jobs that were within a commutable distance of the lake district um and you won't believe what's possible when you just email someone mm -hmm. <laughs> and just say can i work for you and then sometimes some companies seem to be inundated and then others email back and say oh no one ever emails us mm -hmm. like, why aren't universities telling students to do this it's just it's just so route one you know and just you ask yeah just ask fortune favors the bold you know like you, you have to you, you don't just sit there and apply for jobs on read you you email people and you message them on linkedin and instagram and this is how we make things happen okay thank you thanks elise great uh, did, uh kunla did you have a question yes yes yeah thank you very much yeah uh, my first question is i noticed that um, the courses are grouped into two you've got the uh, graphics and then the, the other design if i have to do architectural and interior design do i have to take all of the courses all of the autocars and you know yeah it's a good question so with architecture and interior yeah uh it's i it, we, you would be um my recommendation would be to do all of it because some companies are using rhino some are using autocad some are using sketchup some are using a combination of of all of them um mm. so yes however i mean if you were to strip anything back you could maybe miss out cinema 4d um, yeah. but the cost is the same the cost is 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 fixed so you, whatever okay. so we can be we we i wouldn't you know if you want to do the most efficient route maybe we mm. leave cinema 4d up but yeah the cost would be the same oh okay i see so it's the same it's the same um software to do interior designs and then to do say furniture designs 
Is it the same software? Yeah, it's similar. Um, furniture is more Rhino, SketchUp, AutoCAD. Um, mm. Yeah, and then and then architectural is more Revit, Vectorworks, Rhino, AutoCAD. Yeah, so this crossover yeah. is a little bit okay. different. Crossover, okay. And then my second question: What as as an employee, what does what does the pay looks like? You know, uh, what does it look like in in terms of um, remuneration? Yeah, you, uh, good question. So architectural yeah. visualization, interior visualization. Your first freelance bit of freelance work, we'd probably try in London. We, depending on the company, we'd probably go mm. for one fifty a day. Um, if 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 they were, if we felt as though money wasn't too much of an object, and you were good enough, mm. maybe we could try a bit higher at your first. Mm. Some might, some of the smaller firms might start off with a bit less than one fifty. But what you what you understand is like with Revit and BIM and other bits, the day rate can go up to three three fifty four over the progression of your the years. So if you can really with architecture, if you really know about BIM, building information modeling, YouTube it, go onto Revit's website, learn about it, buy some books. Um, if you really understand that, and then you can help with that, then then the day rate can can keep going up. Um, but yeah, you start off at like one fifty, maybe a bit more, maybe a bit less, and then as you get better, you know, you want to be looking at two hundred, um, and then you're adding things like virtual reality and a lot of building information modeling knowledge. Uh, video with with animation and, and and you can you can charge a bit more um yeah all right okay that will be all for now thank you very much thanks kula thank you yeah. Yeah. lovely 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 thanks for hanging on a little bit longer everyone um so nice to to spend the last uh, hour and 20 minutes with you uh thank you for for sharing your stories and and, and listening to me um yeah i uh, any more information reach out to alex or michael or hello at and uh if you wanted to have a a 15 minute one-to-one -one chat with me speak to speak to those guys or hello at and we can we can organize that to to discuss more personally in a one-to-one -one environment how it could work for you and if if we if we felt that it, it was a, a good fit um so on that note uh have a have a beautiful evening everyone and thank you so much thanks ben cheerio take care guys thank you ben yeah thank you, thank you. cheerio thank you. best bye Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, guys.